we are back from CES, obviously, but still covering the show. And we've still got about five videos following this one to go up with show coverage. So it's been a big week for us. This time we are talking about some more AM4 motherboards, this time from ASRock, Biostar, and Maxon. We've already covered MSI and Gigabyte, so you can check the channel for that coverage. Before getting to the new AM4 motherboards, this video is brought to you by CyberPower and their CyberXL gaming PC, which has an invertible motherboard tray layout. You can learn more in the description below. So as we've said a few times now, there are three main chipsets for the AM4 platform. That would be X370 at the high end, B350 at the mid-range area, and then A320 at the low end, which would be about equivalent to an A68 previously. And then there's the extra X300 chipset, which is not so much a chipset as just a chip used for security boot. It doesn't really do any IO functions. That is going to be on the mini ITX motherboards. We did not see any of those I don't think anyway at the show. There were a lot of motherboards, but I did not see any mini ITX. So for today, we're talking about the, let's start with the Max on board. This is a Chinese brand. You probably don't really hear about it in the US, but they had one or two boards at the AMD booth at CES. Pretty straightforward, eight pin power header. It looks like a total of six phases that might, I don't know if that's a four plus two or five plus one, uh, because we there were no representatives there, but six total phases it looks like. The rest of the specs were the, well, actually the most immediately interesting thing that you notice looking at the board is something that AMD didn't want to talk to me about. The board says that it supports, quote, an AMD S3 radiator. So from what I understand, there will be a couple of different cooling solutions for AMD CPUs. We'll have a separate video on this. The S3 radiator, as the motherboard would suggest, probably is a liquid cooler. And I would have to imagine that S3 would be for the higher end SKUs from the maybe Ryzen 8 core 16 thread SKUs or something else. I'm not sure what, but it's going to be a liquid cooler of some kind, probably some kind of uh, AMD made or branded device anyway, who knows which vendor it could, could be, uh, Coolit or Asetech or Cooler Master, any of them. But that's kind of interesting and just a side point. The rest of the specs of the board, it looks like four SATA 3 ports. So that would be your six gigabit per second. There's USB 3.1 Gen 1 support, and just, again, to kind of reiterate, USB 3.1 Gen 1, there are some differences from just saying USB 3.0, but for the most part, it is a nomenclature change. There are a couple of differences, but the speed is the same, so it's still about 5 gigabits per second, 4.8, something like that. There's a clear CMOS button. There's a COM port for some reason, I guess. Well, it's a Chinese board, and they tend to have more of those on there because... If they're selling to market in China, then there's uh, there's reason to actually support those older interfaces. Two M M.2 ports, and those are PCIe X2, so they're a bit lower in terms of the lane assignment. And then there's one that's SATA 3. As far as Biostar, Biostar has a couple of GT series boards. They're racing boards with checkered flags and things like that, which I guess isn't that much worse than the gaming boards that are everywhere. The GT boards are in GT3, 5, or 7. I'm not sure which one we were looking at, but it is a B350 board. The GT7 board is an X370 layout, so this is either 5 or 3 that we saw in person, did not have a rep or labeling on the board to tell us which one specifically. But it looks like a total of 7 phases, maybe 6 for the CPU and maybe 1 for the GPU, something like that. It does include push buttons for modes that are called Eco and Sport, and then it's got a reset and power button on the board as well. So. Uh, Eco and Sport probably require software to trigger. It's normally some kind of pre-OC and some kind of uh, lowered voltage option. There's a multi-BIOS toggle switch, which is interesting. Don't see those too much on the mid-range and low-end boards. And then there's something called a 5050 RGB LED port, and that's near the USB 3.0 header. So I guess we can't escape LEDs. <laughs> they will be on this board as well, or at least supported externally. Uh, speaking of the USB 3 header, there are solder points for a second USB 3 header. That's kind of interesting. There isn't one on here, but it's not the only board that shows multiple USB 3 front panel connector options. So that does look to be the way that things are going. Uh, this looks like it might be the same PCB that's used for the X370 board, which we didn't see. And if it is, that slot might be populated. ASRock. ASRock had four main motherboards at the CES event in total, but I think we only saw three at AMD's suite or booth or whatever you call it. They had the X370 Tai Chi, the X370 Gaming K4, and the B350 Gaming K4, 
and then an A320M Pro 4, the M signifying that it is micro ATX, not full ATX. The K4 and the X370 models both have the Fatality branding with red and black coloring. The X370 Tai Chi, sort of a higher end board for the lineup from ASRock, has a ton of inductors. I'm not sure exactly what the phase design is at this time. It's a lot, it looks like about 16 total inductors. So whether that's total phases or they're doing some kind of doubling or something like that, I'm not clear on right now. Uh, it seems to use the same reinforced PCIe slots that we're seeing on everything now, even though a couple of companies are trying to patent it. Good luck with that at this point. PCIe slots are wired, if you look at them closely, the full length PCIe slots are wired for X16, X8, and X4. And it does look like it has some sort of muxing capabilities to make multi-GPU more uh, more compatible, I suppose, with the lane availability. The ASRock Purity Sound Marketing Language is present on the motherboard. Eight SATA ports, four uh, by four M.2 lanes using the Ultra M.2 slot, a seven segment display, and then my favorite part is the giant Intel logo on the side of the board, which is for gigabit ethernet. Next, ASRock's got the X370 Pro Gaming Fatality motherboard. This also looks like a 16 total power phase design through the inductors at least. We'd have to probe it to really know more. It's got a single power connector, so even though it's got this insane VRM, whether or not it's actually good, we'll see. But a uh, huge VRM, still eight pins for the power, which on the MSI Titanium motherboard, the X power board we saw, that was an eight plus four. So I'm curious to see how much that actually matters in, in overclocking. PCIe reinforcement again on the X370 Pro Gaming Fatality, two full M.2 slots one of which at least is rated for PCIe Gen 3x4. And then the slots are again wired for X16, X8, and X4 in PCIe, and also looks like there might be a multiplexer on the board. Uh, it might be the same board as the Tai Chi, just with different colors and a few different soldered on items, SMDs and things like that. But the board itself looks pretty much the same. And we're down to just two left. There's the Gaming K4, which is a B350 chipset. This will be a cheaper board. Looks like something, maybe an 8 plus 1 set up or something like that. And it's got, again, a reinforced PCIe slot. There's just one of them this time. It's X16, the other is just X4. So there's no X8 here, but with B350, you can't really do multi-GPU anyway, so it doesn't matter. The M.2 slots are present in the form of at least one using PCIe Gen 3 four by four lanes. There's two total M.2 slots. Looks like six SATA, three slots or ports, and then it's a single GPU motherboard, pretty basic. Uh, finally, the A320M Pro 4 is another ASRock board. This one is micro ATX. It has four DIMM slots, not quite mini ITX, so they can fit more on there. Another 8-pin power connector for the CPU. There's a very cleanly hidden RGB LED pinout at the top, so I think that's becoming somewhat standardized at this point where it can support at least the external strips that you plug into the board if it doesn't come with its own. Uh, four SATA ports, one USB 3 header, and two M.2 slots on the motherboard, and that covers it. So that's what we had for all of the AM4 boards that I'm aware of that were at CES. We covered Gigabyte, we covered MSI previously, there were two other MSI boards we didn't talk about in the video, but we've got some discussion and articles on GamersNexus.net, and now we've got ASRock, Biostar, and Maxon. So that about covers it. Check back. We'll still be posting two days, two videos a day for at least a few days now because we've got a lot packed up from CES. As always, subscribe for more. Patreon link will post all video. Links in the description below for more information. Thank you for watching. I'll see you all next time.